G'day everyone, welcome back to another trade out day. I am looking rough. This is the first time I've looked at myself for a little bit and uh, geez, I need to shave. London's got the better of me. I've been uh, having a great time down here, but today we're gonna do another video on my iPhone, just talking about some of the trade stuff. Um, I am gonna be back in Mac like 24 hours from now. So hopefully this is the last time I have to record a video like this, but I don't think uh, the last one turned out too bad. So we're just gonna sit down on the couch here and talk about some of the trade news because there has been some interesting uh, stories to develop over the last well, 24 hours, if, yeah, 48 hours, I think, since I've done a video like this. Um, so we are just going to rattle off a few of them. Uh, guys, obviously, if, you, if you're new to the channel, I have been doing trade updates for a number of weeks, uh, like sometimes daily, sometimes, you know, weekly. So, um, yeah, if, you, if you're interested in some trade news, obviously go back and check other videos on this channel. And I've got some other videos non-trade related going at the moment as well. But for now, let's talk about some of the stories that have broken down. So... In the last 48 hours, the last video I did for you guys, we were talking about the bombshell uh, potential trade of Taylor Adams to the Sydney Swans. Now, since I've done that video, he has come out and formally requested a trade, which surprised me. I really didn't think this would have that much legs to it. Um, but obviously, this has bubbling, been bubbling away for a little while. I'm imagining perhaps Taylor Adams knew by the grand final that he was potentially going to be at a different club. And I think uh, the fact that midfield minutes... You know, his midfield minutes were reduced over the last couple of years at the at the Pies. Perhaps the Swans can offer him a little bit more game time. Perhaps, you know, tempt him with an extra year on his deal. Who knows what his plans are after football. Perhaps Sydney um, is attempting offer for him. But we know that uh, he has formally requested a trade. So that will probably happen now. You think he does have another year to go. And uh, I think the Pies made a statement and said that he's a required player and obviously a leader. He's the vice captain, not the co-captain. Sorry, I, I messed up in the last video. He's the vice captain. But I just think that uh, they will probably be, maybe not posturing, but trying to do their best to negotiate the best deal and therefore state publicly that he's a required player. So Taylor Adams to Collingwood is an interesting one. James Jordan is, is officially there already, as is Joel Hamling. We're probably gonna see Grundy there as well. So a pretty busy trade period already for the Sydney Swans, potentially getting four players in and uh, Grundy and Adams reuniting. That's gonna be significant. Uh, the other big news story from today is Lockie Shores. This one came out of nowhere, um, requesting a trade to the Collingwood Footy Club. So uh, he had a 12 month trigger mid-year. He hit that, which I think means that he was out of contract originally this year. He hit a trigger that extended it to the end of 2024. So he's contracted as it currently stands. The other thing that's interesting about this is that Schulz is one of those other players that because they've been delisted and relisted previously by their club, he will qualify as an unrestricted free agent 12 months from now. So uh, it's a case of him requesting a trade now, even though in 12 months time, he can walk to Collingwood uh, in a much easier fashion with no trade being facilitated. But the Pies presumably say, let's try and get this done now. He wouldn't have requested a trade unless Collingwood had indicated that it's a good idea. So the Pies uh, now obviously with, with Adams potentially leaving, maybe have a bit more flexibility to try and fork up a deal for um, Lockie Shules, and he's a pretty good player. And Fremantle, they play hardball. They really do at the trade table. As we saw from my Gold Coast video, they um, absolutely annihilated Gold Coast in two previous trades, but they, they, they've they got a real problem, Fremantle, with, with bleeding players and experienced players. Like, I'm gonna put up a graphic here now of uh, how many players they've lost since 2017. Um, and it turns out if your name is Lockie, you're probably not gonna end up staying at Fremantle uh, too long. It's uh, a lot of players going and I really thought this year would be the almost the end of it. We knew about Liam Henry already. Lockie Shaw's leaving. It's uh, it's crazy. It's hard to tell from the outside why. It doesn't seem like Fremantle is a bad place to play um, but I suppose he is a talented Victorian and he has the right to explore that. So disappointing for Fremantle fans I'm sure. I think they're going to request uh, well they've, they've come out and said he's a required player as well and that he's contracted for another year but um, or it's actually that phrase that he's inquired about the possibility of returning to Victoria for family reasons. Okay, so that's a good point, actually. If there's family reasons involved, that's interesting. Uh, but he is a required player. So that means that I think this deal get, does get done, but Fremantle will probably do a good job of making sure they get good value for him, whatever that may be. Uh, they won't let they won't roll over and let Collingwood take him. Collingwood was also linked to Billings, I think I saw on Instagram today, but there's nothing really else about that. Billings is obviously another player that's looking for a new home probably this off season, and Collingwood is the first team since North Melbourne like weeks ago that has been linked to Billings. But I don't know if this throws off their plans. Surely they don't get Schulz and Billings. And there's also you know the possibility of 
Ginevan getting squeezed out. He was already borderline best 22. Schultz is positionally the same, you know, the same type of player. So that'll be an interesting one. Um, we saw Fremantle trade 23 in a future second as well for Port Adelaide's future first. So obviously from the Port side of things, they're trying to um, maximise their draft collateral to try and make separate deals for all the four players thereafter, in particular Asaba Radigalia. So perhaps that pick 23, I think it is now, it gets offered for Asaba Radigalia. Freeman will hold an extra first round pick next year based on Port Adelaide's uh, finishing position. There is a little bit of a rumour that they're potentially loading up for Logan McDonald coming out of contract. That would be interesting and a pretty shrewd move, to be honest. Uh, they are also, Fremantle again, dealing with St Kilda. It was also, I think Stephen Silvani said they off, asked for a top 10 pick. Uh, but I saw separately that it might be an early second round pick that gets this done. Perhaps the compensation pick for Gresham, uh, when that comes about, uh, that that probably seems about right. Again, Fremantle are ne good negotiators. I don't see them rolling over for much less than that. The other big deal we saw today, arguably the biggest deal actually, West, uh, Western Bulldogs have secured Gold Coast pick four. We knew that that was likely to happen. We knew that they were the front runner. I think I mentioned that in my last video. But the Dogs gave up 10, 17, and a future first. So it depends where they finish next year. But uh, a top 10 pick and then two picks in the teens, you'd think. And they get back pick four this year, 46, 51, and a future third. So the motivation for the Bulldogs is, is here that their father-son, uh, who is yet to nominate the Western Bulldogs, people correctly pointed that in the comments, the motivation for them there is that they get a top four pick and uh, their pick 10 and 17 is no longer in danger of being absorbed by a Jordan Croft bid. So they're going to get, you know, pick four plus Jordan Croft at pick 12 or whatever it's going to likely be, assuming he nominates for them, which I, I acknowledge is not a guarantee. Gold Coast now hold pick 10, naturally, and they can do another bidding war for this. And apparently Melbourne, Adelaide, North Melbourne are all keen on potentially trading up to pick 10, um, which we'll uh, get to a little bit later. Uh, North Melbourne, I think Callum Toomey reported that North Melbourne could have picks 2, 3, and 10 if they successfully get uh, Gold Coast pick 10. We know they have those priority picks. 2, 3, and 10, that is a massive draft hand and will make them a huge contender for Harley Reid and pick 1 if they wanted to go down that route. 2, 3, and 10 is probably a really steep offer for pick 1. I don't imagine they'd offer that, but it's interesting. And then another pick swap potentially is there's been talk of Geelong potentially trading pick seven down because they've got uh, several list spots, like five list spots they need to fill, and they have like pick seven and 81 or something. So maybe they'd trade 17, seven for two later picks this year. The two clubs linked to it have been Carlton and West Coast, which I find interesting. I don't know how West Coast gets that done, but uh, potentially expect more pick swaps as well. We saw the Dylan Shield backflip. So obviously we reported on this channel previously that Dylan Shield was likely to get to St Kilda. Dodoro has basically said that it's not going to happen now. It may or may not be related to a knee injury. He got playing with his daughter. It's going to be a four to six week injury. Not sure if that's relevant because uh, you should think he'd be ready for round one. But um, either way, that was another development today. We saw Xavier Dersma officially request a trade to Essendon and Essendon also successfully signed uh, Todd Goldstein on a one year deal. So Dersma probably makes part of that Zerk Thatcher trade. We know that the power are trying to get a little collateral. Razio is probably going to leave as well. So things are starting to shift at Port Adelaide. We know the players they were linked to. We're now starting to get an idea of which players are going to make way. Tom Dode joined the Brisbane Lions. We knew about that, but they've been uh, the Crows have been given pick 19 as compo. So now Adelaide hold 9, 19, 22, and 25. And potentially they form as somebody that could trade up the draft order with Geelong or you know target Gold Coast pick 10 again. So that gives them a really strong hand. The Ben Mackay compensation, we're still waiting for that to play out. I think Essendon formally uh, lodged their bid for him today, but uh, obviously it remains to be seen whether that is going to generate band one compensation. Uh, Rawlings, has, uh, who's the list manager, I think, yeah, list manager at North Melbourne, has explicitly said if it's not pick three compensation, the matching a bid. We knew this again, but these are all quotes from today, I believe. Um, so we're just going to wait and see on that. But I think Calum Toomey said that based on the other compensations picks that have been awarded this offseason, considering how generous they've been generally, uh, it's likely to be pick three. So after all that, um, the conversation about what would happen for Ben Mackay's compensation, it, more, it seems more likely than not that North are going to have pick three in the draft at the end of the day. So not a great result for the rest of us. Obviously, you know, diluting the top end of that talent pool, it, it's whatever. It's whatever. 
Uh, okay, and then a couple of stories to finish off. Uh, we saw Paddy Dow formally request a trade to the Saints from Carlton. Uh, we knew that was going to happen to some extent, but Sydney were also sniffing around. Now they've got Adams, uh, or likely to get Adams. That one seems less likely. He's requested a trade to St Kilda. They've won the bid for him. Um, it just remains to be seen how much you think this would be a pretty low-level deal. Uh, we know also that Carlton rejected pick 42 for Zach Fisher, um, which is kind of interesting. It all kind of depends on how much money is being paid by whom on that front, because obviously he's, uh, he's fairly well paid, I think, and, and got several years still contracted at Carlton, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I do know that North Melbourne have also now offered 42. Now it's rejected by Carlton. They've offered it to Sydney for Dylan Stevens. So it will, uh, remains to be seen on that. And then the other point was that uh, Jade Gresham had formally nominated Essendon as his club of choice for free agency, so that's still yet to play out. Like I said, I think the likely compensation pick ends up at Fremantle for um, Liam Henry as well. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that one. Essendon making some serious moves. We've got Sydney potentially getting in four players. We've got Essendon getting Mackay, Goldstein, Gresham, and Dersma. That's a big off-season. You've got Port Adelaide getting their talls, Asava, Zerk Thatcher, Jordan Sweet, potentially, Soldo they're linked to, and somebody else I think I'm forgetting. So big off-season for a handful of clubs, and there's other clubs as well clamoring for draft picks as well. Very interesting time. Like I said, guys, I'll be back in uh, back in the north maybe 24 hours from now, so we'll see where we go from there. But I intend to go daily again, and uh, it'll be a much more normal setup. So hope you're doing well. Hope you're enjoying the content. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.